Thanks to a latest update from Larian Studios, Baldur's Gate 3 now is closer than ever to that 15,000 different endings mark that they promised that were not in the base game. Today, I wanted to showcase every single epilogue that we have been able to find in the game. This is based on hundreds of different choices. Admittedly, there will be a couple origin character choices that won't be highlighted because either they're not working or we didn't want to play it, you know, 10 more times to see that it's not working. I wanted to thank some other creators that were kind enough to share their content. Make sure you check out their channels below. I wanted to start off with what I think is the best and truest epilogue, a reformed Dark Urge character in love with Carlac. I hope you enjoy. Invitation came, you were hip deep in Lemur slime, swarmed by hell wasps, and about to drive the killing blow on a magma claw. Cutting through the dreadful buzz of the wasps and the screams of the damned, a familiar, comforting voice echoed in your mind. With us, you requested your attendance in Faerun to gather with your friends and allies, those who stood against the Absolute at your side. A reprieve from the Blood War, a few hours of respite with the stars above and good company to cheer you. Carlac's heart can take the strain of leaving Avernus for a few short hours, but it might burst with joy to see those friends again. Thou wert called here, some from above, some below. For with thine bond, together thou hast kept the wheel of fate spinning when it threatened to halt. Though thou wert drawn far apart in the months after the collapse of the Absolute, tonight fate renews thy bond once more. Thou shouldst take care to preserve it. <sighs> oh, shit. Oh, my gods. He wasn't kidding. Where is him, that bastard? You brought us back! <laughs> Commander Zula won't know where the Wait to say hi to everyone. Look at them, the beauts. Rest up, soldier. My tin can will be all right for the night. And you and me will get to sleep with both eyes shut for the first time in six months. <sighs> then again, maybe we won't sleep at all. Me too, my love. See you soon. Come here, you goon. Oh, hey, before you go, I've been thinking about those blueprints we found. Zariel's probably got a load of Cambians guarding that forge. I'm sure she knows I'll want in. She'll do anything to stop me from fixing this thing. I might have an in with one of the guards, though. You may remember my old friend Flo. Not sure she'll help us, but maybe. <sighs> we might get to come home permanently. Maybe even sooner than we think. <sighs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. He wasn't kidding. Where is your mad bastard? You brought us back! <laughs> Commander Zula won't know where the fuck we went! <laughs> oh, man, I can't wait to say hi to everyone. Look at them, the buttes. Rest up, soldier. My tin can will be all right for the night. And you and me will get to sleep with both eyes shut for the first time in six months? Be 
Here, here. Enjoy it, soldier. You've earned it. She's got a knight in her, I think. Any trouble and I'll toddle back off to hell quick as you please. Every time. Oh, hey. Before you go, I've been thinking about those blueprints we found. Zariel's probably got a load of Cambians guarding that forge. I'm sure she knows I'll want in. She'll do anything to stop me from fixing this thing. I might have an in with one of the guards, though. An old acquaintance called Flo. Not sure she'll help us, but maybe. <sighs> we might get to come home permanently. Maybe even sooner than we think. It's so good to be back, isn't it? Oh, it smells like... <clears throat> like home. Are you enjoying yourself, my love? Bold. There'll be plenty of time for that after we're caught up with our old friends. Anyway, I'll need to visit the doctor on our way home. He said there's a potential in his infirmary. A very old woman recently diagnosed with a wasting sickness. She seemed uh, interested in what I have to offer. I want to have a good long talk with her before we make an arrangement. Though, if I'm being very selfish, I hope she'll say yes. I'm absolutely famished. And think of all those memories. I don't hide it well, do I? Some things don't change, even when everything else does. It's funny. I'm hungry in my body, but in my soul, too. That woman has lived a long life. Births, deaths, love, misfortune. And if she agrees, I'll be able to give her a dignified end and remember it all in her honor. But hey, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's enjoy ourselves. This is a rare enough treat, isn't it? Always, darling. My friend, breathe deep. Can you smell it? You take in every scent the night breeze carries. Sweet honeysuckle, tender violets, and an earthy fragrance you can't quite recognize. Forest trees draped in moss, bittersweet, smoky, and that faintest hint of vanilla. A far cry from the rancid of earnest heat that's been clogging my lungs. I swear, the three of us have felled enough Cambians to build a fortress with their horns. Who'd have thought that just one of those fiends held the key to escaping Avernus for good? If those blueprints work, we might be able to fix Karlak and she might be able to go home to Faerun. I think the splinters I made out of the last bone devil I saw speak for themselves. 
Not to pat myself too hard on the back, but I'm not such a bad ranger if I do say so myself. I've seen him more than a few times, and he's as proud of me as I am of him. He's leading the city's renewal, opened the gates to all newcomers, rebuilt the council from scratch, and he's back in his element, commanding the flaming fist with brave heart and no shortage of empathy. The likes of Gortash can bend people's minds with a few chosen words. No tadpole needed. Bane's chosen primed the fist for a war they weren't meant to win. He convinced them there was an assassin hiding in every shadow, that cruelty was the correct answer to crisis. With a few exceptions, fathers pardoned every last fist. If my forgiveness not be tears will, so be it. I shall forgive them all the same. His words, not mine. He still believes in the bow and the blade, but with Floric's help, he's teaching the fist a new lesson. Valor is found not in the wounds you inflict, but in the lives that you have bettered. May they all take it to heart. Well, that's enough hell talk for the moment. The night's young. You shouldn't go wasting it. Or wasting any of the wine, for that matter. I plan on downing half a bottle myself. Oh, did I say half a bottle? I meant half a dozen. It's, it's so good to see you. It's been far too long. I... Hold on a moment. Do you smell that? You take in every scent the night breeze carries. Sweet honeysuckle, tender violets, and an earthy fragrance you can't quite recognize. Forest trees draped in moss, bittersweet, smoky, and that faintest hint of vanilla. Reminds me of the wild and oak, the oldest and most storied tree in all of the Sword Coast. I haven't visited since the absolute fell. Turns out rebuilding a city requires more than a simple wave of a duke's hand. Bargains must be made. Alliances must be forged. Customs must be considered. Father leaves me to my own devices. Oh, he's got no shortage of advice when I ask for it. Still, I make the decisions I see fit. The ones I think will restore the city to glory. I serve only Baldur's Gate. Not a devil of the first hell. I've had more than a few challenges given the horns sprouting from my head. The people know me as one of the champions who saved their beloved city. They know Raven Guard blood flows through my veins. The patriarchs, the aristocracy, the councils of Waterdeep and Arm, their arms aren't so wide open. Still, there's no friction that can't be greased with a sly promise or a proposition. Disbanded, to be formed anew. I don't expect a soldier or street sweeper to see through the schemes of a tyrant like Gortash, but the city's lords and ladies were all too eager to abandon their oaths and bend the knee. My father, Older Ravenguard, is now Grand Duke of the Triad, Keeper of the Fist. Floric is now Grand Duke of the Crossing, the face of devotion. And I am Will Ravenguard, Grand Duke of the Worm, Heart of the Gate. We will yet be four. Until such time and after, we will enact the will of the People's Parliament. Baldur's Gate is nothing without its citizens, both in the upper and lower. Our duty is to them, and only them. The jewel of the coast will shine ever bright welcoming the weak and the weary from wherever they hail. We are building new housing, not just shanties, but homes where families can rest their heads, plant gardens, pursue happiness. Amazing what can be done when Parliament and the Council pressure the upper city elites to open their coffers. <laughs> I'm sure the Silver Shields can make do without a few more jeweled crowns. 
Father's back in his element, commanding the flaming fist with as brave a heart as ever, and delivered them nary a scolding nor lashing. The likes of Gortash can bend people's minds with a few chosen words. No tadpole needed. Bane's chosen primed the fist for a war they weren't meant to win. He convinced them there was an assassin hiding in every shadow, that cruelty was the correct answer to crisis. With a few exceptions, fathers pardoned every last fist. If my forgiveness not be tears will, so be it. I shall forgive them all the same. His words, not mine. He still believes in the bow and the blade, but with Floric's help, he's teaching the fist a new lesson. Valor is found not in the wounds you inflict, but in the lives that you have bettered. May they all take it to heart. Of course. Never. The hexes and eldritch blasts, losing them took getting used to. They left behind a cold abyss where fire once raged. So I stoked a new one. Now the burning comes from within me, not from the depths of Avernus. Go on, the night's young. You shouldn't waste a moment of it. Or waste a single drop of wine for that matter. I plan on downing half a bottle myself. Oops, did I say half a bottle? I meant half a dozen. <laughs> Gods. I must look a mess. I just rolled out from under a pesky ogre when Withers yanked me in. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean... Well, I didn't mean that. I just gutted the ogre, not... <sighs> How about I change the subject before I dig this hole any deeper? It's so good to see you. And I've got so much to tell. The trolls I've torn open. The ghouls I've cleaved. The stories I've been itching to tell. Uh... I don't suppose you'd indulge me. Yes, but just the one, or I'll be yammering all night. You want to hear about the Stegosaurus that bullied Candle Keep, the impossible Lich, or the young dragon who crawled out of Deeping Cave? Wizards have a penchant for unusual pets. A flying cat. Delightful. A menagerie of dinosaurs, on the other hand. The wizard in question was called Rylan. Had a half dozen eggs smuggled into Candlekeep from the jungle. Did you know it takes three ten days for a hatchling stegosaurus to reach the size of a cave bear? Rylan sure didn't. It wasn't a month before the place was overrun by rampaging stegos. The great readers dealt with five of them without too much trouble. The remaining one, well, young Ryland cast in large on it by mistake. The beast rampaged through the baths, demolished Ogma's temple, and smashed through the east wall. Stegos may not have much taste for meat, but they've got a hell of a temper. Luckily, this one had only clobbered a few farmhouses once I'd caught up. The ground shook as it charged me. I vaulted over the beast and grabbed it by the tail. It bucked and bellowed as I climbed its plates and straddled its head. I plunged a blade into the left eye, straight into the brain. It fell to the ground with a thud. Bet the ravens are still picking at its carcass to this day. I've missed you too. The rush of battles we fought, the heart to hearts, the nights around the fire, the comfort of knowing I didn't face the unknown alone. If I had to do it all over again, and I'd rather not, to be clear, I can't imagine not having you at my side. I won't lie, losing the eldritch blasts and the hexes took some getting used to. Nothing but void where once there was hellfire. So, I stoke new fires in myself using the lessons my father once taught me. Now, the Blade of Frontiers is a ranger. A true hunter of monsters. A warden in more than just name. Go on, the night's young. You shouldn't waste a moment of it. 
or waste a single drop of wine for that matter. I plan on downing half a bottle myself. Oops, did I say half a bottle? I meant half a dozen. <laughs> Starting to wonder if you'd show up. He's quite powerful for a fellow content to loiter in our camp the whole time, isn't he? I wonder if he'll ever reveal what he's been up to exactly. But no matter. If Wither's wily ways are what it takes to have you here with us, then I'm all for it. Well, come here, will you? It's been forever. feel a little more substantial than before. Less camping and scrounging off the land, I take it. Filled out and healthy is what I was going for. Don't tell me you miss living off whatever scraps we found in crates and barrels. I'm glad you seem well. Trudy. I found a little cottage. Abandoned, half ruined. There's a lot of such places to be found thanks to the Absolute's armies. I've been making it my own. Healing. Learning to live again. It's hard to think of all that was robbed from them, but they're intent on making every day count for double. My mother's mind still drifts every now and again, but she has more good days than not so good days. She taught me her recipe for apple and plum pie, and when I tasted it, I actually remembered it from when I was a little girl. Some things can't be taken from you, it seems. Father's making himself useful, helping me fix up the cottage and caring for the animals. You should see the amount I have now. He's been waiting years for this. Now he can't stop smiling. <laughs> Sorry, I'm rambling. Family life and pastry recipes probably aren't the most interesting topics for such a historic reunion. I couldn't have said it better myself. Be sure to take your own advice whenever you can. You've earned it. Must I? You presume a great deal. I'm joking. Of course I want to know. Tell me all. I'm glad you two have each other. Hells, I'd be almost tempted to come along if you'd have me. Perhaps if your adventures ever lead you out of Avernus permanently. Hopefully these meetups will become a regular occurrence. It's not that I miss the tadpoles, but at least it brought us together. Now we've got to make the extra effort ourselves. I'm sure we will, but let's be proactive about it all the same. We're more than capable. After all, we've faced down bigger threats than wrangling together a few social calendars. I didn't expect to be nervous, but seeing everyone here like this, it's strange, isn't it? I feel like I must have dreamed the last few months now I'm waking up back in camp with my hair smelling like wood smoke and fallen leaves stuck to my backside. Oh, I've noticed. Ever since I first slipped into my camp garments, I should think. I hope we won't seem terribly boring to everyone when they ask what we've been doing this past while. A 
cottage in the countryside. They may have been expecting something more. Well, more. What's the current count again? Four dogs, eight cats, nine chickens, six pigeons, four sheep, Daphne the milk cow, that odd little squirrel that keeps jumping on my shoulder, and buttons, of course. So am I at times. He's just a helpless pup. I don't think it was a coincidence when I found him in the woods. Far from it. <clears throat> it's fine. Already passed. Shall must have sensed I was enjoying myself. <laughs> You'll seize any opportunity, won't you? But I suppose I've been giving you plenty of encouragement. Why, I feel better already. Are you trying to make me sleepy? You know how easily I get lost in your arms. Have fun. Just don't wear yourself out too quickly. I'm anticipating a long night ahead of us. Starting to wonder if you'd show up. He's quite powerful for a fellow content to loiter in our camp the whole time, isn't he? I wonder if he'll ever reveal what he's been up to exactly. But no matter. If Wither's wily ways are what it takes to have you here with us, then I'm all for it. Oh, come here, will you? It's been forever. a little more substantial than before. Less camping and scrounging off the land, I take it. I suppose I do, don't I? I'm glad you seem well. Truly. Wandering, mostly. The adventuring life is almost a tonic when you're not constantly threatened by brain monsters and cultists. I can finally see the world beyond the cloister. One of my first stops was the House of the Moon in Waterdeep. It's the largest temple of Saluna in existence. It seemed like the perfect spot to reflect on my parents on where they came from. And where I came from too, I suppose. Hard to imagine, isn't it? Me, of all people, in the lair of the Moon Witch herself. Gods, your truest act of heroism was putting up with all that char and drivel I was spouting for so long. Oh, I know they are. I can still sense them, I think. And one day we'll be reunited. Well, I've had run-ins with my former fellow Sharons on a couple of occasions. Word seems to have spread of what happened at the cloister. Now other chapters of Shah worshippers see me as a prime target to 
offer up to their lady as a sacrifice. Don't worry. I know their tired old tricks better than anyone. They'll need more than a hooded cloak and poisoned blade to best me. I don't know. Which is just the way I like it just now. Perhaps I'll just stick a pin in a map and see what I find, or head to the docks in the morning and scrounge a berth to find somewhere new. I'd like to see the islands, maybe, or, or head south to Arm. I heard there's an enclave of werecats that hunt the followers of dark gods by moonlight. I'd love to see if there's any truth to that. But enough about me. What have you been up to? I'm glad you two have each other. Hells, I'd be almost tempted to come along if you'd have me. Perhaps if your adventures ever lead you out of Avernus permanently. Hopefully, these meetups will become a regular occurrence. It's not that I miss the tadpoles, but at least it brought us together. Now we've got to make the extra effort ourselves. I'm sure we will, but let's be proactive about it all the same. We're more than capable. After all, we've faced down bigger threats than wrangling together a few social calendars. Don't be a stranger. Lady Shah's blessings to you. Or perhaps you don't need them. You look well. My lady truly shows her splendor on nights like these. All consuming. Endless decisions to make. Underlings jockeying for your attention. Threats from the outside, threats from the inside. There's times I miss when it was just our little group against the odds. Simplicity is a luxury that's drifted out of my reach, I'm afraid. But at least for tonight, I can have a taste of how it used to be. I shouldn't. But from time to time, yes. Holding the office she once held, standing within the shadow of Lady Shah herself, it complicates my feelings towards her. I came to see her as an adversary, an obstacle. But what recourse did she have? What did she see when she looked at me? A future in which she was discarded, where the reward for her service and sacrifice was to groom her own replacement. What transpired was the Dark Lady's will. If time rolled back, I would do the same thing all over again without hesitation. Yet, I am not without sympathy. What? A show of sincere affection? You're lucky none of my followers are around to witness this. Come here. Let's keep that our special secret. I have a reputation to maintain, you know. Friend? Friend! You came! Big Brother Scratch, too! Happy! Yes, miss this more. Yes, big. But Scratch is smart, teaches me many things, like Big Brother. Widders? No. You smell very delicious. Follow smell, find you. Lots! Make friends with a turtle, a cat, a kraken! 
Kraken eats my cat friend, so I bite, kill. With shiny clothes, I am strong. Tired now? Want sleep? Want cave? Bear man? Hmm. He is big, but not bigger than me. I like him. I go to him. Perhaps the bard knows oh, some of my favorites. This smells Unless so my good taste in music is too antique, of course. Happy? Gonna live with the bear man. Gonna fight him. But no bite. Promise. Yes, miss this. It truly is splendid to see everyone gathered together again, if only for a night. <laughs> I hope the sun does not make haste to rise on us. <laughs> Do you truly even need to ask? Of course, who could not open their home to a befeathered hero of Baldur's Gate? Ah, and I did promise the children I would bring them back a surprise. Oh, imagine their faces. <laughs> nice lady. She gives pets and tasty things. I like her. I go to her. Happy. Gonna get pets. Gonna play. Gonna live with nice lady. You found it. Oh, hells, what? What another adventure, is it? I'm quite content with my semi-retirement. The Albert. Of course I'll have him. If he wants to come with me, that is. I'd have offered sooner, but everything was a blur after the battle. I thought he'd gone to roam free. I'll have to find somewhere for him to sleep, of course. He'd get stuck in the door of my cottage. Maybe the barn. It's as warm as anywhere, as long as he gets along with Daphne. Well, now I'm going to have to do that, aren't I? You're a bad influence, you know. I can picture the look on my parents' faces already. Don't be a stranger. familiar sight. Scratch can't quite speak around the thing he has in his mouth. So am I. I've got a nice home in the city now. A girl named Mindy says I'm her best friend. She's mine too. Also you and Albert. I've got so many best friends. I hardly know who to snuggle. I missed your smell, but this thing I found had you all over it. I, I brought it for you, and I thought perhaps you'd like to throw it? I certainly have, and I always will. Forever, I think, and so will you. You know best, but a little fetch never hurt anyone, as far as I know. Maybe I need Smithers more. This has a keen eye for a nice fruit. Ask me. Why were we scrambling in barrels and papers? This. These. God, I remember one evening when we had to eat 14 apples, some fish heads, and a stale loaf of bread just to get by. A familiar sight. Scratch can't quite speak. Do you even have to ask? Hope. 
I know. I'll have to stop myself from getting teary-eyed when it's time to say goodbye again. Let's make tonight count. The only regrets I want to hear about come morning should revolve around an excess of carousing and questionable dancing. Oh, did you now? Come on then, out with it. <gasps> the owlbear! Of course he can come with us! I always regretted we didn't extend the offer after the battle. It was all such a blur. We'll have to find somewhere for him to sleep, of course. He'd get stuck in the door of the cottage. Maybe the barn? It's as warm as anywhere, as long as he gets along with Daphne. Well, now we're gonna have to do that, aren't we? You're a bad influence, you know. I can picture the look on my parents' faces already. A letter written in a frail hand interrupted your adventures. An invitation to a gathering of former allies. Those who stood with you against the Netherbrain six months ago. The location is familiar. And though the road is hard and long, you would not miss this for the world. Jacques von Fendu. I thought watching you slay Vlakith's hunters in the Cliffs of Swords' Teeth might be the month's pinnacle. But I was wrong. Being right here, with you, is an infinitely greater pleasure. Alas, I can only rest so long. I've got wind of a Githyanki outpost hidden deep in Chult, the last of Vlakith's Sword Coast strongholds. I mean to slay every last Sarth and Kithrak, and I mean for you to join me. You always did have a great fire in your belly. I'm glad to be the one to keep it kindled. Now go, mingle while you can. That's the word, right? Mingle? I won't be far. Not tonight. Not ever. Love. Until I knew you, I thought the mere idea a joke. A weakness indulged only by lesser species. You proved me a fool. I am forever grateful. I trained the Knights of the Comet. For two more, I skewered Kithraki bellies. And for two more yet, I travel through Limbo. But to see your face, it brings me even more pleasure than taking a Royal Inquisitor's head. We've spilled blood, gained a foothold in the Astral. But still, we need allies. And one beyond reckoning has made itself known. Zerith Minyaragith. Not a what, but a who. The immortal god king of the Githzerai. An exiled people. Once king with mine, 
until the madness of civil war ripped our one sky into two. Our Gish sent word of the rebellion to Minyara Gith through the cosmos. He's agreed to parlay. It's fallen to me to secure an alliance. My blade is keen as ever. But it was you who showed me that a proper victory doesn't always require a razor-sharp edge. Sometimes, a sincere plea is more persuasive than a dagger against the neck. Minyara Gith is an ascetic. He reached out in good faith. This is his way. It is in this spirit that I must meet him. And if he refuses, I carry on. Gravity pulls me in but one direction. I am a warrior of the Comet. I will not rest until I burn Vlakit's bones to ash and smash her phylactery to pieces. My people will be free! But you've heard that refrain before. Zealous, bossy, insistent. All part and parcel of my undeniable charm. I suppose it is, rather. I'm just glad to be here at all. It's taken a dozen Gish's talents, a few stolen Psy crystals, and two ten days of effort to conjure my projection. Worth it, I'd say. I miss this place, this... <sighs> Fey run. More to the point, I missed you. But I'll be back to see you again when the comet has risen, as surely as Kalir will forever circle the sun. Jack von Findu. For two months, Orpheus trained me in the ways of the comet. For two more, I skewered Kitraki bellies. And for two more yet, I traveled through Limbo. But nothing has made me quiver more than seeing your face here today. Tentacles and all. Limbo, she'd said. A plane of chaos where you might drink fire like water. Where you might breathe ice instead of air. And the home of the mystical Githserai. Once the Githserai were one of the Githyanki until bloody civil war severed them. across your skin. I can feel you, even taste you in this form. But it is as if a thin layer of glass separates us. I can't quite have the whole of you. It has taken all of Orpheus's efforts to conjure my projection, and all of mine to convince him to let me come. Worth every one of those days and every drop of their sweat. I promise you. But soon, soon I'll find some way to see you in flesh. To touch you as you were meant to be touched. I do. I approach the gates of Shraktalor even now. Shraktalor. How well you know the name. The capital city of the Githserai, and the home of their immortal god king, Zareth Menyar at Gith. Our Gish sent word of the rebellion to Menyar at Gith through the cosmos. He's agreed to parley. It's fallen to me to secure an alliance. Yeah. 
Sometimes. But I don't need the gifts or I to fight for us. Just with us. Love. Love. The word hangs in the air for a moment before Lazel continues, unfazed. Minyara Gith is an ascetic. He reached out in good faith. This is his way. It is in this spirit that I must meet him. He is also a near deity. Should the Gith Sarai join us, we could topple the city of death in a red dragon's blink. Should they refuse, I carry on. Gravity pulls me in but one direction. I am a warrior of the Comet. I will not rest until I burn Vlakit's bones to ash and smash her phylactery to pieces. My people will be free. Chuck. But you've heard that refrain before. Zealous, bossy, insistent. All part and parcel of my undeniable charm. Soon, when the comet has risen, when the Lich Queen has crumbled to dust. I miss this place. More to the point, I missed you. I'll be back one day. The Overgod himself couldn't keep me away. So it has. And a fine man the Hatchling will be. I call him Zahn. Freedom. Before you ask, yes, he is safe. In the care of people I trust. Zahn will be a fine warrior if he chooses. Or a poet, or an explorer, or a scholar. I was afforded a destiny of my own choosing. When he comes of age, it is only right I give Zahn the same. orders from the Githyanki rebel forces in this form. But this was different, an invitation to a gathering of friends, those allies who stood with you against the Netherbrain, those who thwarted the grand design, those who made your war against Vlakith's tyranny possible. You cannot join them in person, but you shall be with them again nonetheless to project your image through the cosmos. Such is the skill of the Prince of the Comet. You have no doubt it can be done. Two months we trained as Knights of the Comet. For two more we skewered Kithraki bellies. And for two more yet we traveled through Limbo. It has taken all of Orpheus's efforts to conjure our projections here. And all of mine to convince him to let us come. Worth it, I'd say. Right here, right now. There's no other place I'd sooner be. Enjoy your night. Chatter away. For tomorrow, we face Zareth Menyar Agith. Zareth Menyar Agith. How well you know the name. The immortal god king of the Gith Sarai and the ruler of their capital, Shraktalor. You might as well ask if the stars will ever snuff out or Avernus freeze over. A consideration for the far future. For now, I don't want the gifts to ride to fight for us, just with us, my love. Love. The word hangs in the air for a moment, before Lazel continues, unfazed. Minyara Gith is an ascetic. He reached out in good faith. This is his way. It is in this spirit that we must meet him. He is also a near deity. Should the Gith Sarai join us, we could topple the city of death in a red dragon's blink. Trust me. My blade is keen as ever, but it was here, in Faerun, 
Where I learned a proper victory doesn't always require a razor-sharp edge. Sometimes, a sincere plea is more persuasive than a dagger against the neck. And if Minyara Gith refuses, we carry on. Gravity pulls us in but one direction. We are warriors of the Comet. We will blaze forth until we burn Vlacket's bones to ash and smash her phylactery to pieces. And when the Comet has risen, we will be forever together. As surely as Kaleer will forever circle the sun. So it has. And a fine man the Hatchling will be. I call him San. Freedom. He is with the mages of Zamvardim. I trust his care to no one else. Zan's destiny will be his own to follow. Warrior, poet, explorer, scholar. His way will be the way of the comet. No chains to bind us. No lies to bury us. Liberty will be the rallying cry that unites our empire. Love. Until I knew you, I thought the mere idea a joke. A weakness indulged only by lesser species. You proved me a fool. I am forever grateful. darling. I wasn't sure our withered old friend could live up to his promise. But here we are. And I must say, for someone who had to face down a dark god, you seem to be doing remarkably well. What have you been up to? No relapses, I hope. A very sensible step. The last thing we wanted was another surprise. <laughs> Not that I was worried, of course. I knew you'd have this under control. But I am glad to see you doing well. I'm glad to see us all doing well, in fact. Things turned out rather nicely in the end. <laughs> Alas, no. I haven't dared to risk it while Cazador still lives. I haven't seen the sun since the brain fell. I'm reduced to eating vermin once more, and I can't walk the streets lest Cazador finds me. Alas, no. Since we lost our tadpoles, I'm just another vampire spawn. If he finds me, 
He only has to say the word, and I'm his puppet again. I can't face him. You, on the other hand, are perfectly suited to facing him and killing him. One hopes. Thank you. I can't tell you how much this means. <clears throat> but killing vampires is a decidedly daytime activity. For now, we can simply enjoy the night. We've had quite the journey, you and I. From the moment I first threatened you, I knew you were someone special. Someone to take on the world with. I will miss our time together. But then again, maybe this isn't goodbye. So much as it's, um... See you later, darling. You're more than capable of facing him and killing him. Of course. After you've saved an entire city, saving one more person is probably below you. Not that it bothers me, of course. I've always been alone. I don't see why that would change now. Well indeed. <laughs> By the gods. This evening can't end soon enough. Hello, darling. I wasn't sure our withered old friend could live up to his promise. But here we are. And look at you. Straight from the hells, still reeking of brimstone. I take it you've been having fun. <laughs> Understandable, but try to resist the urge. I don't want to know what your clothes have been through since we last met. Although I do like the style. Tortured armor never does go out of fashion. <laughs> exactly what I feared. Without the protection of our little friends, I was just an ordinary spawn again. Burning in the sun. I fled the dark and found refuge in the shadows until night fell. <laughs> Part of me was relieved you left so quickly after the battle. I felt... Ashamed. Like I'd lost everything. Just as you claimed your victory. I didn't want you to see me like that. But time lent perspective. It wasn't your victory, it was ours. And for all I'd lost, I'd gained so much more. I had freedom, strength, a whole new life. And it was time to live it. <laughs> I've taken a turn as an adventurer and hero. <laughs> it turns out no one actually cares about murder, as long as you murder the right people. And apparently I'm rather good at it. <laughs> Let's not get carried away, darling. I'm still me. Perhaps more me than I've ever been. Hardly. Good people don't spend as much time lurking in the dark as I do. You know, it's funny. At first, I thought I was trapped by the shadows. Cursed to live in them forever. But in time, I realized that darkness is as much a part of me as my fangs. This is only a curse as long as I refuse to embrace the shadows. So, I decided I would. I decided not to be defined by the choices other people made, by what other people did to me. My past may be done, but my present, my future, they're mine. This is who I am, in all my glory, for better and for worse. That being said, I haven't completely given up on returning to the sun. If the opportunity presented itself, well, I wouldn't say no. But until then, I am happy. We've had quite the journey, you and I. From the moment I first threatened you, I knew 
you were someone special. Someone to take on the world with. I will miss our time together. But then again, maybe this isn't goodbye. So much as it's, um... See you later, darling. And how have our friends fared without us? I'm glad. It would be so easy to go through everything we did and come out the other side bitter and twisted. <laughs> but they deserve happiness. We all do. And I will forever be grateful to have found it with you. I do feel a little bad keeping you all to myself. After all, I get to see you every night. Go on, go mingle. Enjoy your time with the others. Bless them with your presence. I'll be here when you're ready. I'll always be here, my love. So, how are you enjoying the hells, my dear? I assume they're darling as ever. Yes. If anyone can laugh in the face of damnation, she certainly can. <laughs> you are lucky to have her. <laughs> of course. I've tried to taste everything this world has to offer. It has been a joy. I've been rediscovering what it means to be alive. <laughs> More or less. Casador's mansion has become my palace and played host to every kind of banquet and soiree and masquerade imaginable. And of course, has seen its fair share of hedonism, clandestine deals, and the occasional disappearance. Whatever it takes to build up my influence over those who matter. I'm spinning my web. Power grows slowly, but I have nothing but time now. Oh, I wouldn't say ruler. Any old fool can sit on the throne. I would be more of a puppet master. For all my freedom to walk in the sun, it's still much more fun to pull the strings of power from the shadows. <laughs> Not that everyone's on board, of course. Our friend Will is a stubbornly capable Grand Duke. It's been difficult to get much past him. Although, I will keep trying. But the important thing is I am doing wonderfully. Finally having a life that's worth living. And who knows what's next? There's an entire world out there, ready for the taking. <laughs> Perhaps the next time we meet, we'll have grander conquests to toast. I did miss you, you know. There is a sense of loneliness that comes with power. We did share a wonderful adventure, you and I. A pity to see it end in some ways. But we have great new lives stretching out before us and great new adventures to go on. I will never forget the time we spent together, though. And I know you'll never forget me. Until next time. Darling. Six months from the fall of the Netherbrain, you and Astarian were hosting a grand masquerade in the refurbished ballroom of Casador's palace. A young elf wearing an ivory mask in the guise of a skinless skull handed you a note as he passed you in the crowd. An invitation written in a frail hand inviting you to a gathering of the friends and allies who stood with you against the Absolute. Astarian pouted when you read the invitation to him. He'd gladly accompany you, but he would have been happy to host the party himself. As it is, you'll gather in a familiar place, and one altogether more suitable for your reunion.
Thou wert called here, some from above, some below. For with thine bond, together thou hast kept the wheel of fate spinning when it threatened to halt. Though thou wert drawn far apart in the months after the collapse of the Absolute, tonight fate renews thy bond once more. Thou shouldst take care to preserve it. It is a great weapon wielded in the hand of good. Go. Know one another once more. How have our dear friends been without us to guide and protect them? Really? Are you sure? I was certain they'd be half dead and begging us to take them back. Well, miracles never cease. Still, it is good to see them. And good for them to see us side by side. Flourishing. <laughs> we do turn every head the moment we walk into a room. And rightly so. I may have power, but it would be nothing without you. You complete me. And together, we are unstoppable. So, heavens help the fool that tries to get in our way. <laughs> no, I can see more than enough from here. <laughs> but you should go, mingle, chat, love, have fun, my love. And if our friends drop any interesting secrets, uh, bring them right back to me. Until then, I'll be here. <laughs> but don't fret, I will be watching. I am always watching. <laughs> really? I'm amazed at doing as well as that. I was sure everyone would be half dead in the muck. Well, miracles never cease. Still, it is good to see them. And good for them to see us side by side flourishing. And I am blessed to share it with you, my love. I may have power, but it would be nothing without you. You complete me, and together we are unstoppable. So, heavens help the fool that tries to get in our way. <laughs> no. Everything I want is standing right here. <laughs> but you should go, mingle, chat, love, have fun, my love. And if our friends drop any interesting secrets, uh, bring them right back to me. Until then, I'll be here. <laughs> but don't fret. I will be watching. I am always watching. <laughs> well, of course they do. They were never anything without us leading them. I'm amazed they've even survived this long, honestly. Still, it is good to see them. And good for them to see us side by side, flourishing. <laughs> of course, my darling. Look at us. We share a palace, share power, live lives eternal in each other's arms. What more could anyone want? <laughs> God's not this again. I give you wealth, power, pleasure. Every decadence that can be afforded to a person, but you'd rather what? Sleep the dirt again? <laughs> you are my consort. And I will see you living the very best life, even if you don't appreciate it. 
So why don't you go and <laughs> mingle? Have fun with your so-called friends. I'll be here when you're done. Yes, well, that's to be expected. They never were anything without us. I'm amazed they've even survived this long, honestly. Still, it is good to see them. And good for them to see us side by side. Flourishing. <laughs> of course, my darling. Look at us. We share a palace, share power, live lives eternal in each other's arms. What more could anyone want? Already done. But you should go, mingle, chat, laugh, have fun, my love. And if our friends drop any interesting secrets, bring them right back to me. Until then, I'll be here. But don't fret. I will be watching. I am always watching. We have an eternity for chit-chat, my love. The others only get you for tonight. I can't keep you all to myself. Well, well. Look what the Tressim dragged in. Professor Gale Decarius of Blackstaff Academy. Educator of the esteemed School of Illusion. A pleasure to remake your acquaintance. Well, that was quite lovely. I'm glad you're as pleased to see me as I am you. I have to say, I'm quite grateful to just be Gale for the evening. I fear my students find me somewhat intimidating due to my uh, explosive former reputation. I seem to put the fear of the gods into them. Or the fear of Mistra, to be more specific. I surrendered the crown of Carsus to her, as I told you I would. And in return, she cured me of the orb at last. Even now, I struggle to put the feelings into words. It was like... exhaling for the first time after holding my breath for so very long. Of course, I haven't clarified with my students that the orb is no longer a threat. The legend of my explosive capabilities is an excellent means of controlling a classroom. Too good, if anything. But I spend most of my time trying to convince them how much fun the study of magic can be. But it'd be easier to crack a smile on an intellect devourer than some of my pupils. Illusory magic has the power to confound the senses, to render the impossible into reality, and to allow expression of that most magical attribute of all. Imagination. Unfortunately, in that respect, some of my apprentices seem to be rather... lazy. Oh, they try their best, of course. And they can manage to stay awake. The cheek of them! Nothing a well-placed swipe from Tara can't fix, though. And what of you? What are you making of this newfound lease of life we earned? From you, I'd expect nothing less. I've told my students plenty of tales about our escapades. You're something of a hero to them, you know? I'd be delighted to introduce you to my current cohort as a guest lecturer, perhaps. I'm sure they'd have plenty of questions for you. Well, I, for one, can't wait. And I say with some confidence, 
Neither can they. Of course, you'll be most welcome to stay with me in my tower. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, my apologies, Tara. That would be our tower. It will give us plenty of time to catch up on your adventures. I'm very curious to know what you've been up to these past months. But I suspect the telling of that tale would keep you tied to me all evening. So, in the spirit of selflessness, I encourage you to mix and mingle for now. The time enough to come. Oh, right. You. Hello. Yes, I'm certain it is. As for you, well, I've heard congratulations are in order. You helped Mr. Dakario save Baldur's Gate from the Absolute, isn't that right? Well done. Despite my old friend's genius, he'd have blown himself up long ago if not for the help of friends like you and I. You ought to come visit myself and Gail when you're able. If you can extract yourself from what I'm sure are very important responsibilities. We'll send word by pigeon when we've need of you. I used to have a taste for them, but a great many things have changed in recent months. Ta-ta, darling. You're quite certain I look acceptable. Our adventures rarely lend themselves to luxury. Or cleanliness, for that matter. It's been some time since I've made such an effort. That's a relief. I wasn't sure if I'd made too much of an effort. Or perhaps not enough. If only you'd applied those efforts to that thing on your chin. The day I shave this beard, Tara, is the day I shave you. For both our sakes, I hope it never comes. I won't keep you to myself for too long. But while I have you, I want to say thank you for encouraging me to attend this evening. I confess, when I left Waterdeep, there was a part of me afraid that I might regret my decision. But I never have. The chance to see life through your good eye as well as my own. It's been everything I hoped it would be. I'm delighted to be here amongst friends again. But part of me is reluctant to step away from our new life, even for such a gathering as this. merely lack the correct motivation. But even the City of Splendors itself fails to dazzle when set against your beauty. I'm just glad I'm not the only one encouraging you to leave the library once in a while. It does one good to feel the grass beneath one's paws from time to time. I don't know where to begin in telling people what we've been up to. I suspect they won't believe me. Well, the improvements I made to the High Hall alone should protect it from any passing nether brains for a millennia, at least. One can never have too many buttresses, after all. Our lives are certainly a far cry from the one I once pictured. Even now, with the orb's fires quelled by Mister at last, I scarcely dare believe it. <laughs> Before we met, I fear I was rather stuck in my ways. And stuck inside my tower with a world-shattering orb of magic sealed within my chest. To be fair to myself. I was afraid to so much as dream of a night like this. To hope that my life might amount to more than lonely, bitter disappointment. And then I found you. Standing here, now, I no longer see the people we were. Frightened, desperate, alone. 
We changed. We survived. And we did it together. I've missed them. I've missed this. I'm quite certain they're as delighted to see you as you are to see them. Speaking of which, I think it's high time you bless someone other than myself with your inimitable presence. I love you. Now go on, before I change my mind. Goodness. Was Faerun always so... dull? Still, at least the company was worth a trip, if not the view. I'm forgetting my audience. Etiquette amongst the gods works rather differently. They're a lot more direct, shall we say. I imagine you're wondering how all this came to be. The finer points of divine ascension are beyond mortal comprehension, I'm afraid, but I can provide a rudimentary sequence of events. First, I retrieved the crown of Carsus and reforged it using a series of precise and highly complex Netherese incantations. Then, I used it. As you know, the orb within me was the half-form of Karsai Weaver, magic left incomplete by Karsus' self-destruction. I finished it. Using the crown of Karsus, I turned it into a new form of magic, fused with my being, driven by my purpose. And then I put it to work. As expected, Mistra was unwilling to hand over the reins of the weave, so... I've claimed dominion over another area which I've... passing familiarity. Ambition. I offer them nothing. I inspire them to seize their destinies for themselves. Great as the heights I've reached thus far may be, I've not forgotten my humble origins. In fact, they're central to my doctrine. Those drawn to the Galarian Creed don't merely seek my guidance as the impressive, all-powerful being I've become. Ambition is about beginnings. It's not just about the heights, but the lows that preceded them. I was nothing. Drifting dust mote of a wizard, abandoned by my goddess, my powers lost, my reputation destroyed. And look at me now. I'm their proof. Proof their hopes are not barren wastes, but the loamy soil in which their future achievements will flourish. Proof that with ambition, anything is possible. Ayo would prefer to let the cosmic dust settle from my unexpected ascension before considering my right to grant my followers such power. I'm sure it'll come around in a millennium or so. And by then, my creed will be something to reckon with. There are already several shrines in my honor scattered across the outer reaches of Thay, and rumors of a very prominent temple under construction in Arm. This is only the beginning. A 
thought you would be. Now, divine as my company undoubtedly is, I have an eternity to catch up with you. A luxury few others at this party possess. Don't let me deprive them of your company. Or mine, for that matter. It's not every day a newborn god shows up to the reunion. <laughs> So, it's time for me to return to the heavens. The question is, do you wish to go with me? To become a god at my side? That is for you to decide, my love. Ambition made me what I am. What drives you, we have yet to discover. Your domain will come to you as you settle into divinity. I can't wait to see what you'll become. Then follow my lead. Close your eyes. How do you feel? And that's just the beginning. I have so much more to show you. time in eons and eternities, and space is a matter of infinities, overlapping impossibly in the dreams of the divine, but the bonds of friendship and heroism still have meaning, and they are truly without limit. That is why you must return once more to Faerun, to be with those who stood alongside you when the nether brain fell, to be among mortals once more the best of their kind. Perhaps they can tell you how much time has passed since the last time you were together. Thou wert called here, some from above, some below. For with thine bond, together thou hast kept the wheel of fate spinning when it threatened to halt. Though thou wert drawn far apart in the months after the collapse of the Absolute, tonight fate renews thy bond once more Thou shouldst take care to preserve it. It is a great weapon wielded in the hand of good. Go. Know one another once more. There you are. Keeping us all on tenterhook so you can make a dramatic entrance, is it? Reunited with Starting them. to wonder if you'd show up. I suppose it can't be easy making friends amongst the gods, being the Pantheon's newest arrival. Well, come here, will you? It's been forever. Hmm. You 
feel a little more substantial than before. Less camping and scrounging off the land, I take it. So, you really did it. You became a god. <laughs> it almost makes my ascension look trivial. You must love it. All that power at your fingertips. All those followers worshipping you. A god after my own heart. <laughs> but I am more than happy with my ambitions. And I'm sure they will only grow. I am a little surprised you came. I thought this plane would bore a god. All these petty mortals and their mayfly lives. But I suppose we should be grateful you blessed us with your presence. Oh, praise be. <laughs> Old friend, for two months I trained the Knights of the Comet, but to see your face, it... Limbo, she'd said. A plane of chaos where you might drink fire like water, where you might breathe ice instead of air. Not all of us can play the weave like a liar, Gale. I am the Comet, not a god. We've spilled blood, gained a foothold in the Astral, but still we need allies. And one beyond reckoning has made itself known. Zerith Menyaragith. Zerith Menyaragith. You've heard the name. The immortal god king of the Githsarai, and the ruler of their capital, Shraktalor. Our Gish sent word of the rebellion to Minyara gift through the cosmos. He's agreed to parley. It's fallen to me to secure an alliance. And yet, you still make it sound so boring. Truly, God Gale, Minsk is glad to see you have not changed one bit. But I ask, should Boo send you prayers? Answer not. For his ambitions to be realized, the world is not ready for such things. Now, halfling, Bu will not have you embarrassing him in front of his friends. So you are to know the rest of the company you keep. Soldier! It's really you! I've missed you, Gale. Or should I say, your holiness. Can't believe you really did it. Ascended. Wouldn't have picked that for you myself, but at least you look good. <laughs> I don't even want to know what I look like. It's been hard in the hells, as expected. But having Will around has been incredible. Fuck is even better at killing devils than yours truly. We don't have much time to chat, but just knowing he's there makes all the difference. Oh, but hey. Guess what we found? Cambion dropped a map with directions and blueprints for Zariel's own private forge. A fucking forge! Our current plan is to get in, grab a smith, and force him to fix old Rusty. Or maybe give me a brand new model that can live outside of Avernus. You haven't seen the last of old Karlak yet, soldier. Trying not to count my owlbears before they've hatched. But the thought of coming back to Baldur's Gate keeps me going. Can I look you up when I'm out? Hey, that would be kind of fun, though. High stakes, hide and seek. <laughs> Honestly, I'd be curious to see if you could land a blow or two. Guards, is it good to see you again. To be here, together. Hard not to get used to it all over again. This won't be the last time. I promise. Mine for the taking. This one night is like any other, and thou art the savior of Boulder's Gate. 
until such time it requires saving again. I am pleased to hear it. The satisfaction of one's intention is, to my surprise, a rare accomplishment. Enjoy the revelry of the day. Thou deservest at least that much. Well, there he is. Gale in all his glory. I hope you're happy, the god of ambition. Have you ever heard anything more ridiculous? Ambition, aspiration, greed and hubris is all I hear. The Gale I knew wasn't like this. He recognized his mistakes. He was contrite. All he wanted to do was live. Unfortunately, he fell into company that turned his gaze toward foolishness. Then you're just as mad as he. I know there's nothing you could have done to stop him. Not really. Once he'd decided to learn nothing from his mistakes, what use were either of our protests? Perhaps you'd be willing to come meet Gail's mother sometime? She misses him so, and I know it would do her heart a world of good to discuss her son with someone who knew him as he was. Jolly good. I'll tell Mrs. Dakarios to be expecting you. Oh, she'll be delighted. Things just haven't been the same without himself cluttering up the place. Enjoy your party, dear. I've heard you quite deserve a celebration. Ugh! I thought the beard was bad before, and now it's glowing! I wish I could say the same. I thought you had more sense than this, Gail. I thought you had any sense at all. Using your family name was a show of respect. But you've buried that deep in the litter box, haven't you? Godhood. So vulgar. It isn't too late for you. Other gods have given up divinity. You could still come home to me, to your mother, to everyone who loves you. But you won't. I know you won't. You followed Casa straight down the road to ruin. And I won't be there to watch, Gail. I suppose this is goodbye. To you, your wretched ambition. And that God's awful thing on your chin. Very funny, very godlike behaviour. Is this what Elysium's brought you to? Take me a ten day to put this right. Well met. I am a magical projection of Gale of Waterdeep. And if you see this manifestation, that means I have prematurely perished. Alas, on this occasion I appear to have been erased from this plane in both soul and substance. So, the usual protocol for revivification cannot be followed. I am, however, available for the duration of this spell to assist with the tying of any loose ends related to my recent departure from mortality. Elegantly designed failsafes to be executed in order to reverse the occurrence of my unexpected but impermanent demise. As I am unable to detect any trace of my existence in reach of mortal magic, however, such a protocol would, in this instance, be destined to fail. The good news is I am here precisely to assist in cushioning that heaviest of blows. I have been entrusted with the delivery of a letter to be given to one who cared most for me in life. I hope these words do something to ease the tragedy of my untimely and honestly quite unexpected passing.
with that, I'm afraid my spell is waning. Is there anything else you need of me before I blink out of existence? How fortunate I was to know someone like you. book refuses. Oh, right. You. Hello. Yes, I'm certain it is. As for you, well, I've heard congratulations are in order. You helped Mr. Dakario save Baldur's Gate from the Absolute, isn't that right? I can almost feel Gale here, among his friends, in you. Some part of him remains, doesn't it? A crackling in the air, isn't it? That flare of magic and mischief. Oh, what I wouldn't give to snuggle up on his lap one more time. Just once would do. Oh, I couldn't possibly. Unless, well, perhaps it's not a terrible idea. Gale would be quite pleased to know we've made friends, wouldn't he? Perhaps you'd be willing to come meet Gail's mother sometime? She misses him so. And I know it would do her heart a world of good to discuss her son with someone who knew him as he was. Jolly good. I'll tell Mrs. Dakarios to be expecting you. Oh, she'll be delighted. Things just haven't been the same without himself cluttering up the place. Enjoy your party, dear. I've heard you quite deserve a celebration. So you made You would it. think someone of my vintage would be inured to the passage of time. Yet these past six months have seemed endless without your company. But now our paths cross once more. Just as I hoped they would, more like. The Oak Father has been kind to me this past while. Yet I cannot forget the bond we all forged together. It is one that can weather any distance, any passage of time. I know it can, for I feel the longing for old friends in my heart each day. I always do. Should I ever decline, assume a doppelganger has taken my place. Hmm. That was more than worth the wait. That was more than worth the wait? Oh, I suppose you didn't mean that literally. Now, we have much to catch up on. Do not allow me to ramble on. I am eager to hear all you've been doing. In that case, very well. Our community grows rapidly. In six months, we have turned what was once a shadowy wasteland into a true home for all. In another six months, I would wager the scars of the past will be entirely invisible, even to those who remember them. The old masonry of Moonrise Towers and Rythwin have been repurposed into new homes, and the land is rich with harvests and bountiful trees. 
Nature and civilization are in harmony. Stronger together. In a manner of speaking, yes. Though it is a more complex, evolving beast than I could ever have anticipated. True balance is no simple, fixed thing. Hmm. I see that now. We welcome folk from all walks of life. Anyone who wishes for a new start. Naturally, it can be chaotic at times, but it is a thrilling sort of chaos. It thrives in ways I could never have dreamed of. You are welcome whenever you like, and for however long you please. Now, please, tell me all, and spare no details. I shall not lie, I have an ulterior motive in wishing to hear all. It is the children, you see, my charges. Their appetite for bedtime tales is greater than I could ever have anticipated. Another story, Daddy Halsin. Another is the chorus that greets me each nightfall. They have all but exhausted my repertoire in but a few short months. No mean feat given the lifetime I have lived. I desperately need new material, please. My reputation is at stake. I am all ears, though I never cared for that phrase. A rather unsettling image. You are truly incapable of disappointing. The children shall be wrapped, and have no fear. All due credit shall be given to the tale's originator. Now, it would be cruel of me to hoard you all to myself for the evening, as much as I would like to. I shall leave you to the others for now, unless there was anything else. Quite often, they come and go as they please, but with so many playmates to avail of, <laughs> they are far from strangers. They ask after you often. What you did for them will never be forgotten. I can see it in the land all around me, but more importantly, I see it in their faces whenever they visit. To make a child smile is to dabble with the power of gods, as far as I'm concerned. I spend half my days in ursine form. The children demand it. I had a score of them taking turns riding upon my back just days ago. <sighs> I'm glad they are so comfortable with the Oak Father's creations. But they must learn that not all are as amiable as I am. A lesson for another time, though. They deserve some joy. As for roaming, that impulse has dwindled, I must admit. Perhaps because I have found where I am meant to be. On occasion, but I prefer not to interfere. Francesca of the High Forest is Archdruid now, and by all accounts, she has proven to be a steady and wise influence. Even Korga may yet find true balance, thanks to her influence. Uh, before you go, I have something for you. Just a little keepsake, really. Do you remember how I told you I like to whittle? I made this. Ducks are my favorite, but I thought they were particularly fitting in this case. They are migratory birds, of course, traveling far and wide with the turn of the seasons. Yet, they always find their way back to where they belong. <laughs> Just like old friends find themselves back in each other's company. Ha! <laughs> 
Oh, I am well aware, trust me. Now, I've taken up enough of your time. Go on, enjoy the festivities. I was eager to attend tonight, yet I cannot help but fear that it may be a mistake. Do you know what I speak of? All these months, and I haven't been away from what we built together. There's a whole community out in Thaniel's realm that has never known a day without our presence. Being away from it, I cannot help but worry how they will fare in our absence. Hmm. I hope so. The children shall miss their bedtime tale tonight. Though, perhaps I can glean a few new stories from our friends here to make up for it. Tell me, are you happy with the path we tread together? I took you from a life of high adventure to one that can be described as, well, anything but. I thought perhaps that seeing everyone once again and hearing of all that they've been doing, it might awaken some regret about the life we lead. You could have done anything, gone with anyone, yet you chose me. I am glad to hear it. Forgive an old fool in need of a little reassurance. I am still expecting to stir from the dream. You must be eager to speak to some of the others. I shall be fine. Do not allow me to keep you. By all means. <laughs> I could get used to this. <laughs> you read my mind. The day I weary of those lips is the day I weary of life. Of course. Uh, seeing them free and happy may be my proudest achievement. And now they have more playmates than they could ever wish for. To make a child smile is to dabble with the power of gods, as far as I'm concerned. Well, now. You can make yourself presentable when you have a mind to. <laughs> ah, how nice to be understood again. I have spent the past months bickering with builders and bankers, all to restore the city exactly as it was. Same twisting alleys for purse pickers, same wooden buildings ready to get burnt by next year's dragon. Same cisterns overflowing. Huh. An empty throne. Thanks to you. The city will not be long in burying it. Baldorians simply... get on with it. <laughs> Stubbornness, civic spirit, plain stupidity. Perhaps all three, but nothing I will sniff at any longer. Harpers have come from half the world over to lend aid. Farmers, masons, healers. My own son, Jord, has been wooed to their ranks. Already he plans crop cycles in Worms Crossing. Not so for my daughter. Ryan's rejoined the Flaming Fist. Temporarily, you understand. To organize the craftsmen. Though she spends more time locking up comrades for pocketing eight ones. They might learn a thing or two. 
If they don't expel her. Again. I suppose I am. I tried to steer them clear of my life's work, but they have chosen it for themselves. Ah, oh, there is still much to do. People to house, a Harper network to rebuild. I may have little love for this city, but so long as my family chooses to serve it, I can do no less. For all your travels, I hope you have arrived where you want to be. Home. Whatever that means to you. Garlak is lucky to have you. And know that you are not forgotten. If your friends don't drag you from the hells, it will only be because you freed yourself first. But there will be more to discuss on that matter. First, I must inspect the refreshments. You'll never know. Some ne'er-do-well might have tampered with the wine. Ah, breathe deep, boo! The smell of heroes sings from every stone in this place. Ah, to meet again where your journey began, my friend. An honor. For Minsk and his hamster both. Oh, and for Happy also. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, honored, of course. He is not a guest, but your newest follower. It is just this day that Happy learned of your legend, while we gazed down upon the very city you saved. He d d dangled me from the high hall, upside down, for two... Hours. Eh, the guild should not go creeping in high places if they do not have the stomach for them, hmm? It is well for Happy the strange portal appeared when it did. Minsk's arm was growing excellent. <laughs> so I have. Though it is a piece made more from blade and boot than it is any sense of brotherhood. Nine Fingers forbade any looting of the Illithid's fleshy vessels. And so Minsk guards what remains of the battle site. Even from her. But where Minsk might once have thrown any sneaking scoundrels from the tower top, now I tell them of you. How you ruled the wickedness within. How they might do the same. Yes, yes, I'll rule it. I'll be better. Oh, of course. It is still for Boo to decide if they live or die. Oh. Oh, God. But enough, my friend! I cannot tell your tale if I do not know the whole of it. Minsk and Boo would know where you have been, what you have done. it would mean to find a cure for Karlak's heart? Exactly! Her heart would be cured! Oh, when this day comes, you must come and bunk with Minsk and Boo. Fear not. We sleep in that sewer no longer. It is a different sewer, much less damp beneath the bedroll. Now, halfling, Boo will not have you embarrassing him in front of his friends. So you are to know the rest of the company you keep. Will Ravenguard, the Blade of Frontiers, Devil Horned and Angel Hearted. Lazel of Cress Killer, true child of Gith and true friend to Boo. Though she will and say it is not so. Astarian, who is banished by the sun itself for fear his Spanish soul might outshine it. We visit him much down in the dark places, Though he often moves his lair without remembering to tell me square. Gale, the man who would be a god, but then thought better of it. Boo thinks better of him for it too. Shadowheart, 
two gods tugged at her soul, but she managed to keep it all for herself in the end. Wait, Boo, did, did she do something with her hair? Halsin, archdruid of Archer, somewhere. He is a much better man than he smells. And there, the champion of the hells herself, Karlak Demon's Bane, Devil's Bane, Merkel Ball and Bane Bane. Once the guild is made of good nymphs once more, Bull shall scratch the hells wide open and find a way to bring her back. And finally, Jahira. If this is a name you do not already know, then not even Boo can save you. Study them well, sneak thief. For the best among them will be a guide for your guild. Heroes who put the city before themselves. Who never fought her in their duty. And more than this, who never arrived to a party without even a gift for the host. But wait! Go, my friend. Be among our friends. There is much work yet to be done before this one is fit to join them. Now, there's a face I know well indeed. He's going to kill me, isn't he? Not the big mad bastard. The hamster. We are not dreaming. It is our old friend. Oh, and it is good to be seen. Oh, after so many days down in the dark, Minsk began to wonder if he was some blind bug who had only dreamed himself to be large and bulksome. You will forgive the aroma, I hope. We were not expecting the dusty one to open a portal to our very cell. Boo had a moment to lick himself clean, but there is a little too much of Minsk to cover. Minsk and Boo have been helping, of course. We guard the streets, while Jahira is occupied with harperish matters. The Zentarum rule the city's underbelly, so Minsk and Boo went to give them a tickle. There were harsh words, battle cries, some manner of uh, head wound. We awoke in a Zentish cell, awaiting trial by noble combat. <laughs> I... Execution, says Boo, though I, I am not sure of the difference. It is a long walk to the gallows, and Minsk still has his fists, no? In ample time indeed. So long as the Bone Mage returns us to our cell by dawn. Who would not be late to the bloodshed. But leave such matters for the morn. Tonight is for celebration and the telling of tales. How have you filled your days since we tore this sticky tyrant from the sky? No, no, my friend, it is not yet time for tears and passing boo around for the wiping of eyes. There is much merriment to be made before the night is done. Go and greet the others. Minsk shall make himself presentable. Ah, this pond shall do nicely, boo, though I see no soap. So you shall have to blow the bubbles for me. In the six months since the Netherbrain fell, you have often doubted the decisions that led you to the depths of the Underdark. Here, there is little comfort. There is only conflict, danger, and war against impossible odds. But there is also joy, even though your camps are haunted by scuttling spiders and loth-sworn soldiers, when you lie with Minthara, you feel like you could tear down the world. And you're building an army of your own. The outcasts, the exiles, and the rebels flock to your cause. Now you must leave them for a brief while and return to the surface. 
For you have received an invitation to meet with friends and allies once more. Thou wert called here, some from above, some below. For with thine bond, together thou hast kept the wheel of fate spinning when it threatened to halt. Though thou wert drawn far apart in the months after the collapse of the Absolute, tonight fate renews thy bond once more thou shouldst take care to preserve it. It is a great weapon wielded in the hand of good. Go. Know one another once more. Yes, my love. Are you done talking to your friends? Can we leave? I think not. They may respect me or fear me, but I do not think they like me. <laughs> what makes me so? My quick wit, my cold heart, my cutting insights. In truth, I have never enjoyed parties. Although they do present the perfect opportunity for a poisoning. Excellent. Taste my lips. They are already laced with toxins. None shall be spared tonight, not even you. Now go. Mingle, carouse, indulge. Tomorrow we return to the Underdark, and our campaign against my house continues. We will need all of our strength. I always have strength enough for you. Do not make me wait long. Fascinating. Thou hast ventured long with thy comrades, shared food, fire, and friendship, but even such adamantine bonds could not prevent thee from ruining my party. permit you to destroy one another after all thou accomplished. Be gone. If only you defied your father when you had the chance and freed yourself of your dark desires. But it's too late now. Your destiny is set. Your very blood shall clot with the urge, and that hungry desire will consume you. You may have freed the world from the control of the nether brain, but you are not yet free. Your father is angry. What foul punishment awaits you now that you have rejected him? Even now, your desires threaten to consume you. Your only hope is that a prison will be sufficient to contain you while you spend the rest of your life pondering your sins. But it seems your father has other ideas.
Thou remainest in thy chains, separate from the light of the world, removed from its temptations. Thou feared thou would be a slave to thy desires. Dost thou still fear that which lurks within thee? Hast thy cruel father taken all of thee that thou once was? I see. Poor, piteous soul. Men will forget thee, books left bare to be filled with falsehood, myth, and superstition. The tapestry of fate, however, will not forget, nor will I. Rest well, friend. Thou deservest as much. Till next we meet, remember, thou gave all thy word to save. Reclaim the world from a fate most dire. Well done. The balance of the world restored. The balance of these lives, mortal and otherwise, brought to account. To you! <laughs> Many killing moons have waxed. As each set, more your mind waned. No mortal cell could hold you. The bars broke like bones. You pray with each new heart spillage. You worship with your diseased embrace, siring a mad legion. You scream, for you cannot speak. Yet... In the treacle pulp of your brain, something called you back. Here. What is this place? It was something once. Bonds, warmth, strength, fear. Love. Now you feel only impatience for these blood sacks to sleep. So you can strike with the death dream. Each time you unhinge your maw, the words of the prophet tumble forth. Not long now, not long. Wait until they are at rest to strike. Patience. You are Baal Stallion. Many of your own Baal spawn have been born to die in this half year. Your new children will become the tyrant's horde. Why do you spare even one thought for your forsaken mate? As soon as it tries to pass through your lips, you feel violently ill. She's running from the finest day of her life. The last one. The revelry is falling to a lull. Your witching hour draws close. Pity gags in your gullet. Yes, they will die. Yes, 
just for you. What are you doing? No! You've butchered so many before. Each death a gift to your father. This one, you will take from him. This one is just for you. Flickerest there, the poor brave soul who hath defied the lord of murder, the madman in king's clothing. With thy death thou hast given life to all the lord of murder would see undone. Thou hast made good on the promise of thy better heart. Tell me, adventurer, hero, friend. Do the voices echo still? Thou deserveth as much. Let thy mind be its own place, thou mayst sow and reap. Ah, <laughs> what sweet fruits might such fertile ground yield? Thy life may be forfeit. But thy death hath only begun to unfold. What awaiteth thee is a mystery, even to me. I cannot account for thee, adventurer, hero, friend. But I know thy story endeth not here. Death itself hath many byways, and thou might yet have a new and different role to play. Many killing moons have waxed. As each set, more your mind waned. You pray with each new heart spillage. You worship with your diseased embrace, siring a mad legion. You scream, for you cannot speak. Yet, in the treacle pulp of your brain, something called you back. Here. What is this place? It was something, once. Bonds, warmth, strength, fear. Love. Now you feel only impatience for these blood sacks to sleep. So you can strike with the death dream. Each time you unhinge your maw, the words of the prophet tumble forth. Not long now, not long. Wait until they are at rest to strike. Patience. Worse than an animal. It all flows freely now and mingles with the gore. Your body is not yours. I am. A stagnant marrow treat. You have cultivated these crusted companions. Wrenching, ripping, scraping. But you do have a favorite. The last nerve of a wobbling block snaps. You don't need those molars, neat thing that you are. The revelry is falling to a lull. Your witching hour draws close. Q. 
Kill them all, Matt Balban. Kill them all. Six months since you faced your father and refused your birthright. Six months since you cured yourself of the urge. Your life is your own now. And you are already becoming someone new. But the memories of the past will not leave you alone. You receive an invitation one day, in a hand you recognize immediately. Challenger of Gods, it reads. Surely thou wishest to see thine true family once more. Withers, who raised you when your father struck you down. He bids you join him as a gathering of your allies and friends. So, once again, you return to the place where you formed your first memories. You are calm. You are you. You can do this. Thou wert called here, some from above, some below. For with thine bond, together thou hast kept the wheel of fate spinning when it threatened to halt. Though thou wert drawn far apart in the months after the collapse of the Absolute, tonight fate renews thy bond once more thou shouldst take care to preserve it. It is a great weapon wielded in the hand of good. Go. Know one another once more. Starting to wonder if you'd show up. In all likelihood, it will be. But we mustn't let that stop us. Oh, come here, will you? It's been forever. Hmm. You feel a little more substantial than before. Less camping and scrounging off the land, I take it. Fair point. I'm not quite sure this evening's refreshments will be to your tastes, but hopefully the company will make up for it. I'm glad you seem well. Trudy. Must I? You presume a great deal. I'm joking. Of course I want to know. Tell me all. Well, you needn't count me amongst the panicky. I know what you did for all of us. They'll never forget it. Coming from me, that's saying something. Ah, oh, it's the star of the show. Our humble protagonist who forsook Baal to save the city. Our skeletal friend will be very pleased to see I found my way here, despite my invitation getting lost in the post. Oh, I wouldn't bother you with such things during a party. You might help me with the title, though. I'm considering the hero and me. What do you think? Who says you're the titular hero, hmm? Oh, I jest. 
probably. But believe you me, I couldn't have written a word without you. Well, now. You can make yourself presentable. Your higher form has brought with it some higher manners, then. But so long as my family chooses to serve it, I can do no less. The Harpers welcome any into their ranks, so long as their soul is willing. You've proven you have one, Mind Flayer or no. I have lived many lives. It is only right you be allowed to live another. Take this. There is, um, usually a ceremony. Reciting of odds, singing of songs. I'm sure we'll get to all of that as the drinks flow. For now, I give you only the most simple Harper Creed. To look for the light, and watch always for the dawn. But to enjoy the night while we have it, huh? Be well, Cub. I must inspect the refreshment. All this stimulating conversation leaves you hungry. To speak is not enough. You wish to explore the brain of your friend with your beak. Weary Jahira. Over time, her stresses may have shrunk her hippocampus, making its taste more intense more intense. This is highly illogical. There are plenty of other craniums awaiting your suction. And this is a prize ally. And besides this brain before you, its endorphins are in a joyous flow. It is a wonderful scent. The odor of friendship. Ah, you see, Boo? I told you our friend was near. Oh, shit. Soldier. It, it's really you. Oh, I've missed you, man. Like, I've really missed you. And you're so tentacly. Can't miss it. So shiny. Haven't seen any mind flayers anywhere in Avernus, I must say. Never thought I'd miss them. War's a dirty business. Enough, my friend. I cannot tell your tale if I do not know the whole of it. Minsk and Boo would know where you have been, what you have done. has been admiring the sheen of goo upon your slimy form. He says it twinkles in the starlight. Hello, darling. I wasn't sure our... W At least I assume it's you in there. It's a little hard to tell. <laughs> How have you been since, um... everything? Genuinely, a few would make the sacrifice you did. Indicator of the esteemed school. Well, that was quite lovely. I'm glad you're as pleased to see me as I am you. I have to say. Quite grateful to just be Gale for the evening. But it'd be easier to crack a smile on an intellect devourer than some of my pupils. Smiling may no longer come easy to you, but I've seen how your tentacles twitch at my jokes. 
Even the ones I'm not entirely certain I was trying to make. Mm. Still, I hope... Oh, they tried... The cheek of them! Nothing... And what of you? What are you making of this newfound lease of life we earned? Living life to the full, even as an illithid. <laughs> Inspirational stuff. I've told my students plenty of tales about our escapades. You're something of a hero to them, you know? I'll be delighted to introduce you to my current cohort as a guest lecturer, perhaps. I'm sure they'll have plenty of questions for you. Never fear. My students are as open-minded and generous a bunch as you'll find north of the Giontha. And I'll remind them of their manners. For I feel the longing for old friends in my heart each day. I always do. Should I ever decline, assume a doppelganger has taken my place. That was more than worth the wait. How thoughtless of me. Come here. Ah, there it is. That is what I've been missing. Now, we have much to catch up on. Do not allow me to ramble on. I am eager to hear all you've been doing. I am all ears, though I never cared for that phrase. A rather unsettling image. Yet not by me. I shall tell the children of your heroism and sacrifice. They shall know what they owe to you. Trust me. You, a thief, a liar, <laughs> and a fool. We had an agreement, and you broke it. The crown was supposed to be mine. Instead of delivering it to its true home in the Hells, you allowed Gael Dicarios to deliver it to Mistra. I should snuff you out and make coin of your soul. <laughs> but it will be more amusing to let you see the consequences of your actions. Do you really think that the crown is safer in the hands of a goddess than in the claws of a devil? Look to the history of these realms. It is not the devils, but the gods who sunder, wreck, and ruin. It is the gods who instigate each new crisis. It is the gods who almost brought doom to your world. I was merely a witness to their conspiracy. And I would have dealt fairly with you. <laughs> I cannot say what Mistra will do. Perhaps the crown is a mere trinket to one of her power. Or perhaps it is the key to unlocking some dreadful new potential in her portfolio. Time will tell. As it always does. Look to the heavens and pray for peace. But prepare for a cataclysm.
I owe you a debt of gratitude. It is thanks to you that Gale, the wizard of Waterdeep, became Dicarios the Divine, god of ambition. Without you, he would not have survived the appetites of the tadpole. It would have feasted on that impressive mind of his, and all of his talent would have been snuffed out forever. But mere survival was not enough. Not for Gale, and not for you. Saving your world from the gods and monsters that threatened it wasn't enough. Gale wanted more and you encouraged him to ignore every sensible instinct, to ignore the lesson of Carsus's folly, and to reach for the heavens. You were the spark that rekindled Gale's hubris and set him on a course that will make Celestia quake. I longed for the crown to satisfy my own ambitions, and I was furious that it had escaped me again. But I have assessed the situation, pondered every variable, plotted every possible course, and I have come to realize that this is for the best. In time, long after you're gone, Gail Dicarios will cause such division and chaos in these realms that even the lords of the hells will be aghast to see it. Ambition. <laughs> such a delicious sin for mortal kind to indulge in. Such a dreadful weapon for an immortal to wield. The gods will be sundered, and from their ruin, I will rise. I owe you a debt of gratitude. You were the spark of ambition that rekindled Gale's ambitions after Mistra had so cleverly put them to rest. And you are the reason he survived the appetites of the tadpole for so long. I will admit I was angry when you failed to deliver the crown to me. Those who break a deal with this devil do not usually live to tell the tale. All is forgiven, though. The crown came to me as promised, and the method of delivery was spectacular. Gale harnessed its power, as Carsus once did, and he too fell into ruin. He was halfway to heaven when the orb detonated, tearing him apart. All that remained were ashes, blood, tears, and the crown, always the crown. The decimation of Gale did not even leave a mark on it. Ambition, courage, hope. <laughs> they all burn you in the end. I will bend the crown to my will now and use its power to bring the nine hells under my command. When that is done, I will need new worlds to conquer. <laughs> it won't be long before I come knocking at your door. Ta-ta for now.